Hi, this is Master Pain and welcome to my channel. Today I will share with you some initial insights into succession that I've got so far, animation cancels, maybe some combos and tips. But before I jump into it, and since this is my first video in 2020, I want to quickly thank you all for watching my videos in 2019 and for supporting my work here. Special thanks to Here I Come and Kyle Schneider for keeping in touch and following me through ups and downs. Okay, so the first thing you want to look up here are actually the descriptions of the succession passives. The Abyssal contract is stating here that the skills strengthened after succession are also Big Kick, Ultimate Shadow Eruption, Signs of Agony, Imminent Doom, Ultimate Dark Flame, Dark Backstep and Dark Trade. So it is not only the succession page where things happen. So with Big Kick and Dark Flame here, the upgrade purely is on damage. Both give so-called additional servant hit damage, whatever the servant is, and they consume shard to increase range and number of hits. This makes Big Kick a very nice part of the damage combos and Dark Flame even more powerful. Dark Backstep gets an increased movement distance. This is something you can try to use in disengages. Although it is unprotected, you can connect it with Imminent Doom, which I will get to in a second. The Dark Trade is reworked a little to use mana points to get shards. You still trade HP if mana is below 20%, but really does it change a lot? Most of the times you use it to cube off yourself and to get that mana back. So now you trade mana points for mana points. Is there a point here? Maybe comment below. The other thing here is super armor and again, I don't see a really good reason for it. This skill is rather quick to cast. Maybe if you do it within some intense fighting, between night crows, skills hitting you all over the place and it will make you resistant but I think that you would be dead there anyway if you stayed within these kind of situations people get one shot easily these days the imminent doom as I mentioned can be cast from dark backstep with the shift E looks good but this leaves you unprotected Maybe when you are dodging or disengaging, this can be thrown in there to surprise enemies. I haven't used uh, Dark Backstep, so maybe this will make me. You can also cast it same way while you are holding your Abyssal Flame. I don't see a real reason why would you do this, since charging the flame like this makes it hit with Knockdown. And the Imminent Doom procs Stiffness. Maybe it is to make some uh, kind of surprise attacks again. People seeing you in the skill charging animation open up themselves. Well time will show. For now you can't cast it after flames animation cancels, which I'll be talking about later too. One more skill here is listed, engulfing crow, whatever it is, I couldn't find it. Alright, the next skill is signs of agony as it gets the 15% movement speed debuff. This is quite a good change, making it more viable and strengthening that range abilities, which is a general trend for the Sorcerer's Succession. The last skill here is the Ultimate Shadow Eruption, but before that let's quickly note what's on the Agent of Abyss passive, and what it does is enhancing the mana recovery from Shards of Darkness by two times, and it increases the damage of the listed skills even more if you are buffed. Again, it is not written how much it affects the damage, so as I understand it buffs them even more when you use Q buff and besides the things in their descriptions. So let's go through that ultimate shadow eruption and this change is huge because now you can cast it from Crawl Flare and Black Wave instantly. And moreover, this is separate with the regular Shadow Eruption. To cast it from Crowflare and actually Beat Kick to, you simply hit left mouse button. This makes it an ideal combo initiation, as you can Midnight Stinger, Crowflare and the ultimate to apply a knockdown as a second CC and follow it with the damage combo. Simple and effective. You can also use that Crowflare into ultimate to surprise the opponents with a quick counter. And it uses that single shard to increase size, so it looks pretty huge. You can catch the whole groups of people with it. 
the other way to quickly cast it is from the black wave. You need to hit forward plus left mouse button while casting black wave. So what you can actually do here is instantly cast the power hit of the black wave and follow it with the ultimate. I find it a very good initiation too. And since we are with this skill now, the way for quickly cast that power hit is not hard on paper. But actually when you try to connect it with others, you can find yourself doing dark flames, kicks or abyssal flames. So from standing position all you need to do is and follow exact order down, right mouse button, left mouse button, F. And it's easy here. But if you cast it from Midnight Stinger, you will wanna follow Stinger with down, right mouse button and hold just a little bit until you see the character starting casting that absolute darkness and just then proceed. This way you will save yourself from Dark Flame surprises. The other thing about Black Wave is that it can be followed with Violation. So with the initiation in mind like before you can do something like this. Midnight Stinger, Crow Flare, Ultimate and then Black Wave Blast into Violation to apply nice debuffs and then follow it with damage. If you initiate with Black Wave instead Crow Flare, there are two ways to proc Violation from this. And the first one is simply Midnight Stinger into C which as you all surely noticed also casts itself turn back slash in between. The other way to cast violation in this initiation is from shadow eruption. So funny thing because now you cast shadow eruption after its ultimate. And a quick note here, the ultimate also procs the addons effects. So here shadow eruption is only for violation flow. The regular Shadow Eruption will work here, but even better is its new animation cancel from the Absolute Darkness. This one is similar to the Black Wave Blast, you just don't need to add that left mouse button into keys order, so down, right mouse button, F. And again, when casting from the other skills, you might want to wait to see that Absolute Darkness being cast before hitting F, or you can find yourself in Rebounding Darkness instead. So you can proc Violation after this and the next is Damage Combo which for me looks like this. Crow Flare or Shadow Ignition into Big Kick, C for Turn Backslash and Abyssal Flame. You can even connect Crow Flare with Shadow Ignition through Big Kicks and the order to do this is not important. But the Abyssal Flame is the main point here and its animation cancel from Turn Backslash. The skill itself has a big potential, the damage is good, so you poke enemies effectively now. Actually you steal some kills with it too. You can catch people with stiffness, overall a fantastic skill especially in group PvP. They made it that it's easier now to cast it from any Nightcrow, but also from any turnback slashes. So you can cast it almost instantly by just cutting turnback slash with it, uh, like this. You can repeat it and it really does damage now. One more skill to talk about is Bloody Calamity. Simply put, you can cast it after Rushing Crow. This has a potential for a safe and aggressive engages. Although mind yourself because the hidden part of the Rushing Crow is actually unprotected. So as always they leave this very small window to piss off any sort of player. Yeah. <laughs> If you have found any other interesting succession mechanics, please share them in the comment section below. As always, thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you didn't, hit the notification bell and I hope to see you soon. Peace.